and we cover all the steps of career services since checking the mm -hmm. uh, values that you have, what can, kind of company you want to work for, what kind of job you want to have, if you want to travel, if you yeah. want to stay put, all those things. What is your perspective in terms of career development? How, what's your career plan? They, Very they, important. These courses, these courses yeah. 10 modules. They have 10 modules. It has 10 modules, which gives a certificate when you finish. Hello, welcome, and thank you for tuning in again. I am Dr. Maya Bird stewart with Atlantis University, and you are in the studios, AU Studios, with myself. We've got an awesome and very um, informational guest that will be joining us on this evening, one of our own, Professor Alex Lima, who also serves as the Director of Career Services. And so without further ado, we want to welcome you, Professor Lima. You are a VIP at Atlantis University. I'm sure you know that, right? Mm -hmm. Jobs, jobs, <laughs> jobs. But more importantly, careers, careers, right. careers. And so welcome, Professor Lima, and thank you for joining us on this evening. So first of all, uh, Dr. Bert Stewart, thanks for having me. Absolutely. It's a great opportunity to be in the AU studio. I love to be in a classroom, but to be here is a step up. Yes, so, uh, I agree. So it's a great time. So thanks for having me. I'm looking forward to discuss to tell you whatever you want to know about career service. Well, you know what, uh, um, Professor Lima, so as you know, at Lancaster University, we are in the business of educating mm -hmm. individuals, right, and preparing them for long-term and sustainable careers. Mm -hmm. And we brought career services under the umbrella. It's been several years, and so I personally know in the 15 years that I've been with Atlantis University, we have tons of success stories. And so now with you as the director of career services, you and I have had a chance to talk and, and right. work together on some things, and I know we continue to have success stories. Mm -hmm. What are some of the services that we offer, and what do you find that, or do you find that we differ in any way, and you know, are we as competitive when it comes to right, our right, ability right. to help our students in, in, in gaining new careers? Right. That's a good question, so I'll give you uh, kind of a long, a long answer. When I joined Career Service last year, I did a huge search. Uh, look for I looked for a, a lots of other universities about what they were doing. Right, mm -hmm. so I look at I don't want to mention the names, but I look about of 12 or 15, give or take, universities in the United States. Smaller, bigger, prof profit, non-profit, it's kind of have a sense. And I decided to see what would make more sense for us here mm -hmm. in AU and differentiate ourselves in terms of what we could provide, right? So uh, there's a lot of things that we do in career services that we have developed. Uh, so in a nutshell, okay. we, pre we prepare the students, for example, the, their resumes, their interview skills, yes. their career planning, Very their important. online branding. Yes. Those are sort of a starting point. And I tell okay. the students all the time, you need to start early because the sooner yes. you start, the better it becomes. You know, the easier it gets for you to find a job. I tell the students that the market is very competitive. The mm -hmm. United States, particularly us, which are a multicultural yes. university, lots of people from different countries, they come here, and I tell them the United States market is huge, but there's also thousands of, of people looking for mm -hmm. jobs as well. Mm -hmm. so, um, so we do that preparation, which takes time. It's an ongoing process. Mm -hmm. That's I do in sessions like the Job 360, okay. which is a session that we invite the students to participate in classroom setting here or okay. online. We have a version of sp in Spanish, one version in English. Awesome. We also do individual coaching, lots of time for them. Today I had three students that called me or they came to my office and we discussed things. Uh, actually today, this very day, I had three students, two that came to my office and one over the phone. Okay. And they, and I covered with them whatever is in the stage of job search that okay. they have. Could okay. be 
looking for a new job, could be changing jobs, mm -hmm. could be the first job, could be an interview coming. An example, today a student came to see me and she is in a process, in two processes, being interviewed at the moment. Ah. So last week she came to see me and I gave her pointers. We look at her resume. I send a resume to another company that I have a relationship. So she's now having a couple of interviews and awesome. she's like, came to tell me, should I stop one because I have another one? I say, no, you just keep going. That's everything. right, yeah. So it's a very personal conversation, which I, mm -hmm. I love it. I love to be with the students on a one-to-one -one basis. Yeah. I usually say that career services is an interesting animal. We have the book, which is the volume, the training for a lot of people, et cetera, and we have the individual. Yes. At the end of the day, it lands in the individual, right? The book doesn't work for you. you what is your situation, mm -hmm. right? So um, we also do have relationships to quite a number of organizations. When I say relationships, those companies call me, I call them, and for, I can mention many of them, like Marriott, Highgate Hotels, mm -hmm. uh, Publix, Norwegian Cruise Line. So there's more companies, and these companies have an ongoing relationship. But I tell the students, you have to be prepared because mm -hmm. I recommend you, but at the end of the day, the decision-making process is with the client, yes. is with the company. Mm -hmm. So if you don't perform well, you will not be able to get hired. Yeah. So the idea is to give as much, you know, as, as more uh, elements and, and inputs that I can, sharing my experience doing businesses, owning companies, doing my work, so that I share what works and what doesn't work. Absolutely. Another thing that we do, I have developed and I, uh, a career services training course, which is free, uh -huh. and is one for undergrad, is one for grad, and this course we're launching this year, it was prepared last year, and uh, the course I have received great feedback from the students taking it, um, and we cover all the steps of career services, since checking the mm -hmm. uh, values that you have, what can, kind of company you want to work for, what kind of job you want to have, if you want to travel, if you yeah. want to stay put, all those things. What is your perspective in terms of career development? How, what's your career plan? Very they, important. These courses, these yeah. courses, 10 modules. They have 10 modules. It has 10 modules, which gives you a certificate when you finish. And we're going to have quite a number of people register for the Spanish version and for the English version. And how often, Professor Lima, are these sessions held? This, that's awesome. How yeah, I do the Job360 on a weekly basis. I do okay. one session uh, in Spanish okay. and one session in English. So we have this Monday and Tuesday. I'm going to have next week again, uh, a little later, because people, from a work perspective, mm -hmm. it works better if it's about 6 p.m. Okay. on the online session. We also do the sessions every other week here in a classroom setting. The Job 360. Job 360 is a session that is a sort of an overview of everything that we have within a U. For yeah. example, we have a, career, a, a resume tool that people can build lots of resumes. I train them in interview management so that I say, look, you got to interview and interview. Today, a student came to see me one of the students that I, I told you about, and she went to a job fair. Mm -hmm. The job fair through that, and she's not yet ready for the job yet, but okay. I tell them, just go. Ex just yes. see how you perform. The experience. What is the engagement yeah. that you have yeah. with the employer? Because so many things can happen. Sometimes the employer will not like you. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you don't like them. Sometimes both of you get together well and nothing happens. Mm -hmm. Sometimes mm -hmm. you got together well and there's a job opportunity that comes up. Yeah. So everything can happen. So the more you train your interview settings, your interview skills, the better you become. And you said something that's important. You said that you know there could be a time where the, the company may not like mm -hmm. you or there could be a time where you may mm -hmm. not like the company. Right. Do you agree that not only should um, an individual be interviewed, but they should also interview Absolutely. the employer yes. to identify and really be able to make the best determination Absolutely. as to whether yes. it's a good job fit. Yes, and I tell the students, uh, that's one of the things that's always like already in my brain, almost hard hardcore in my brain. I said, look, you need to understand the company that you get into. Not just the business, not just the yes. division or the unit, but the culture the history, who's gonna, who are the leaders. Yes. If this company fits your culture, your uh, way of living, it, because if there's a big disconnect between the company culture and your culture, mm -hmm. your way of doing things is not gonna work. Yeah. So if you are, let's say you're more informal and you like things more fluid, you're not gonna probably work in a high-end hedge fund mm -hmm. kind of company when mm -hmm. everything's like very you know, structured. You have to look at that first. 
in your first job, if you can, if you can, look at the perspective, the opportunity, rather than just the salary. Because the salary can be misleading for you, too. You but know? you said something. You said, in your first job. Mm -hmm. uh, now, you know, um, Professor Lima, like I know, you know, the first job, that's usually the most exciting time, mm -hmm. particularly of a young person's life, right? They think about, you know, the money that they'll make every week or every other week, the benefits, you know, I can buy a car. Mm -hmm. So it's very difficult, I think, for a young person that mm -hmm. first go round, but you still say, and I guess, and I would say we still believe that it's important to do that though, yes, right? Absolutely. Well, let me give an interesting story. About 20 years ago, people were less interested in the pay. I remember my friends, myself included, we got the first jobs. We were looking for career development. Mm -hmm. We wanted to learn. And the money would be mm -hmm. something that would come as that a consequence yes. at the time yes. of your progression. Because without the career development, the money probably wouldn't come, right? Yeah. Today's market is a little bit different. Younger generations want to have the financial reward early. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but mm -hmm. there's some elements to be considered, which is, which are, um, you may choose a job that looks very nice but doesn't fit. Yes. Your true interest. Job now, fit. Job exactly. fit. Now, yes. one consequence, not because of that only, but one of the things we see today is in the younger generation, a lot of, you know, uh, coming and going and changing jobs, mm -hmm. which, you know, instead of being just necessarily positive, uh, may, may lead to a lot of job hopping that mm -hmm. in about five, 10 years. Mm -hmm. Which is not a difficult. career, which exactly. is not a career. Exactly. So yes. I tell the people, when you work for our organ, any organization, is a marathon, it's not a sprint. Yes. So you have to plan yourself for a long time. So when I say do your career planning, two years, three years, don't, don't do 10 years, 20 years, mm -hmm. but when you start working, see your job as a learning experience. Sure that you try to get as much as you can, you give as much as you can, and you get as much as you mm -hmm. can, and it, that's a continual education, right? Yes. That's the way I have seen the jobs and opportunities, and people that do that, they usually align themselves better to the opportunities that can come up for them. Do you find that our students are receptive to mm -hmm. career services? Do Are you finding that as you're doing Job 360 and as you are sharing with students that will come or as you're going into the classroom, do you find that our students are receptive and they feel like they do need the services? Yes, it's a good question. Well, it would be a little an arrogant of you, my part, saying, but the, the, the point is, when I go and see them, I usually find a good vibe, a good energy sure. going on. So they mm -hmm. really come to see me. We have a lot of testimonies. If you go to the career services office, you see yes. outside. Those testimonies were, ask the students, I say, do say whatever you want to say. I don't mm -hmm. tell them what to say. If you want to say, it's not something they do because they want to do it, right? Yeah. So we got quite a number of testimonies of real cases that we work with them. Uh, when I go to the classes, because I'm also teaching, mm -hmm. there's a lot of people know me from, and I like to teach because allow me to know who they are yes. and engage them in a different yes. way. I also tell them that, look, guys, the passport for a job is your academic success. Without academic success, your career will be short-lived because wow. the employers will know how much you know. Yeah. It's just a matter of time. Yeah. So a poor academic record is a big problem for your career, you know, success mm -hmm. for your career. And what I mean career success is you being happy with the way things are evolving, right? Mm -hmm. But to answer your question objectively, I see a good engagement with the students, the athletics, the uh, bachelor's, associate, master's, and, and that's one thing. The other thing I find it, because of our population of international students, mm -hmm. that they need help because the cultural aspects are yes. different. Yes. I tell them, look, the way the American job market look at you is different than in many other countries. I lived in like five countries, a minimum of two years in each one. So mm -hmm. I have seen it, the way people do things in different yeah, places. Yeah. So the way you explain yourself, the way you engage, the way your body language, the tone of your voice makes a big difference. So you have to train yeah. yourself to do yeah. it, right? Um, so it takes time. So the secret is start early. Okay. On when you join the university, start preparing your resume. Mm -hmm. Start you know, building your skills build your LinkedIn you know, profile. Mm -hmm. So everybody goes to LinkedIn when they want to hire you. So or before hiring, they want to check who you are. So be careful with Facebook and you know, Instagram, what pictures you post there. Yes, Everything can be seen. Yes. So it's a whole package. So you got to look at all those things step by step, right? And then we, and, and engage with career service because we'll guide you through the process mm -hmm. to find 
the and job. And so you've said something that I have to tell you. Years ago, uh, I was at Broward College, mm -hmm. and I sat on a committee, many of the many committees. And so I sat on a committee where uh, the, I guess, faculty selection committee. Mm -hmm. And there were, we were interviewing, this particular day, we were interviewing a couple of individuals. And I remember sitting in the conference room, and one of my colleagues pulled up the Facebook mm -hmm. for one mm -hmm. of the candidates. Yeah. And I... I, I remember being appalled, but I re also remember being intrigued. I remember being a little baffled. <laughs> I remember kind of feeling yeah. violated for this person. Like there were just yeah. a, a range of emotions right. when that happened. And because it was it, it it wasn't something that you heard of then. Mm -hmm. Well, today it's almost it's the norm. Listen, I say it all the time. Anybody, you know, everybody who's anybody, you can find them on the internet, yeah, right? Absolutely. Whether it's you know mm -hmm. a Google search or the Facebook, mm -hmm. right, yeah. or Twitter, or and so while years ago, while fifteen years ago, or or ten. 12, 12 or 15 years ago, I think I was a little disturbed by, you know, Facebook and pulling up someone's. Mm -hmm. Today, I, I do feel like it's a good tool in terms of helping companies to identify mm -hmm. the right person for the job. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on? Yeah, you're right on. You're right on the spot because the thing is, you are a total package, right? So, I tell the students, and I tell people, uh, individuals that come to me and ask questions, say, look, people will see you as the package, right? Mm -hmm. Your LinkedIn profile, which is your professional profile, who are you or in Facebook or Instagram, what kind of places you go, what kind of things you share. So depending on what you share, mm -hmm. It's there for a long time. Once you put things online, they never go away. And it's always somebody with a cop that copied a photo or that situation. Yeah. So a lot of situations can work you out, you know, take you out of an interview process. Because people are not going to tell you. But I tell them, um, when they see that, it does, it's impact the culture yeah. of the organization. They're not going to consider you as a candidate. They may not tell you, but all of a sudden, you're out of the process, right? So be very careful. Yeah. I tell the people as well about dressing codes. We have a document. We have lots of, we have a career uh, 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 services resource center mm -hmm. on the online campus. All the videos that I made, white papers, best practice, salary surveys, all these job postings, all of them are there in Spanish and English, right? So they can access all the students, have access. We look at the new students come, we give them access. Mm -hmm. It's just look at everything we do is in there. Now I tell them, look, once, once you do those things, you know, when you present yourself uh, to uh, an employer, you know, when the, the people ask me about a dressing code, they say, oh, I have a hair like this, I have a hair like that, I have lots of jewelry. I said, look, you can do whatever you want. I cannot tell you, because that's a common question, mm -hmm. usually, the job 360 okay. covered that. Okay. They'll say to President Lima, should I do this? Should I do that? I say, I give you the standard, for example, dressing code, mm -hmm. but you do whatever you want. If you want to make a, a stand on the way you, li you live and your, your dressing style, your hairstyle, it's up to you. It's your personal life. But be advised that companies pay attention to that. Yes. And there's an a, 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 a unspoken Un, rule uh, yes. that unspoken. is about what is the, because you're not, in when I hire you in the company, you become a speaker, you become a, a, representative, a representative, a part of the culture. Of my image. Yes. So yes. if I, my yes. image is a senior, conservative, traditional yes. individual, yes. I have to have people that represent yes. that image well, right? Yes. Otherwise, I'll have a disconnect between my customer base Absolutely. and my my. my and customer, and you've said it. You myself. you've said it's something that we mm -hmm. all you know must be mindful of. When they go and they look mm -hmm. at you know our social media, mm -hmm. and they take on a perception or mm -hmm. a perspective or you know just ideas, right, mm -hmm. are formulated about who this person is mm -hmm. or who we are, and unspoken. You said it. Yes. Unspoken. And so many mm -hmm. times, right, one cannot get the job mm -hmm. and you felt that the interview went exceptionally exactly. well, exactly. right? The interview went exceptionally well. Well, then they go back and they go to social media mm -hmm. and what they felt that they saw in the room 
doesn't, you know, the, the, the social media doesn't quite match, you know. Um, and so, yeah, that unspoken word. And it's right. interesting because while we interviewed this person, we said nothing about his exactly. own, the social exactly. media, yeah. but it factored into the decision. Exactly. Absolutely. And the person didn't get the job because of that. And like I said, for me, this was, you know, 12, 15 years ago. It was surprising. It you know it was it was very surprising for me, um, but today mm -hmm. I feel um, I won't say that I feel strongly about using it. But today I'm okay, and mm -hmm. I under if if nothing else, I understand mm -hmm. why companies use it. Exactly. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, so I'll give you, no, let, let, let Professor uh, Dr. Mia ask me. So, well, if I think about, if I think about the, the I guess, the, the multiculture that we have here, mm -hmm. right? You talked about mm -hmm. it. We have, I mean, if there's a country, I think we've had a student from every country. You can go into our classrooms mm -hmm. and there could be 27 students and everyone is from a different country, mm -hmm. right? Including myself from Chicago, right? Mm -hmm. And everyone else is from somewhere else. And so you talked about, you touched on the the adjustments that, that a lot of times our students have to make because of the culture, mm -hmm. right? Being in America. Right, right. Um, Americans operate in a very yes, different absolutely. way. The interview process is very different. Do you find that our students have still been able to find success in terms of you, uh, and, and not only you before you, but but in terms of being able to be placed in careers right, right. and and even just secure opportunities here in the U.S.? Do you find that um, we're we're winning? I guess there. Yeah, we we have. I have had some uh, uh, interesting cases that we worked with the students that highlighted. Um, without naming the students, but for example, there was a case of a student that she was looking for a job. I spent six months with her preparing her, and eventually I placed her with the uh, company that I know, the president, and he's used, he uses me as a sounding board, and he sent me an email saying, I trust your judgment, ah. I will interview her. And in fact, of the matter, she, he, she was hired, right, almost, almost on the on spot, the spot. Right? Wow. and they took a little while, she was from a different country, but she's doing very well. And I asked him the other day, as I said, these re these relate these companies that I mentioned, I have relationships. So they call me, I call them. Sometimes I visit them. We go out for dinner or something. Sure. So he said she's doing very well. Good. Another another individual, he is uh, um, was studying with us he, from Venezuela. Uh, lots of experience in Venezuela. He has worked in some minor jobs here mm -hmm. in the U.S. Um, then I help him to get a job. Took a little while. Now he's happy in a company that is working in exactly the area that he was trained before, right? In his country and the, the knowledge that he, he gained in the sure. uh, EU uh, in the MBA. classroom. Yeah. So another one is a is a, an individual that we place him in a financial services organization. Mm -hmm. He was looking for somebody like him, and it was a good match. It was a, a way of personalities and match of good personalities. And there's something interesting. A lot of the students that I have helped to Place I place them in AU as a student worker, which I yes. find very important because, and we have a, quite a number of them, and I think all of them, if not, or most of them, came through me or with me or they talked to me because I try to, to, to match the uh, technical or the experience Absolutely. with the personality. Because yeah. yeah. I tell them, it's a good way for you to gain experience in, in an American company at mm -hmm. Lance University. And we have them, many of them doing very well. Good. International department with admissions, with mean career services, with student support. So many of them are doing very well. So there's quite a number of people, but all of them or many of them are international students. Yes. Many of them. And there is a process of really, as you said, the cultural engagement, the understanding yeah, of yeah, what is supposed to be done. Mm -hmm. For example, some countries. People have a longer sentence. They talk too much. They explain themselves too much. Mm -hmm. In the United States, people are a lot more straight mm -hmm. to the concise point and concise. Yeah. Yeah. And that Specific. takes some training. I tell yeah. them, you need to learn how to explain yourself, and that's it. Don't ex say things like that. Kind right? of that elevator pitch, exactly, right? We're exactly. talking about that one minute, yeah. that elevator exactly, pitch. Exactly. And so, and so I... 
I'm not going to say any names. I've seen the list of um, of those companies that mm-hmm. that we have partnerships and even yourself, you know, close relationships right, right. with. We've got we've got a very impressive lineup of companies that we are connected to, Professor Lima. And, and our coming, and more are coming. I'm in the process of talking to four new organizations that we are in conversation. Uh, I think it would take maybe about. 30, you know, 20 days or 30 days to have. And uh-huh. the way I do it, I belong, I, I believe in long-term engagements. Yes. Because those become loyal engagements. So yes. I, rather than the guy, there's something that is amazingly successful and disappears, I prefer things that build up. Mm-hmm. I always worked in business and my professional life since I was very young. I like the relationships. Yes. To build people that know me and I know them. It's proven that you work with people that you trust. Yes. If you have absolutely. two things, if you have people that are super smart, not trustworthy, and the guys were good, but very trustworthy, you're gonna get the second choice. Because mm-hmm. you want people that you can trust. Absolutely. They are with you, right? They don't backstab you. They work with you. They don't like it, they tell you, but it's all honest, right? So the way I engage with these organizations is the same way. I call them. Today, for example, I talked to three companies already. Asking us, hey, send me your updated list. Yeah, I'll send it to you. So it's a very fluid conversation. Mm -hmm. They send it to me, and I recommend the students. Uh, I prepare them, and I tell them, look, if you're not in prime time, it's hard for me to recommend you because I will send you Mm -hmm. because I want to make sure that the company's engagement with us is always on a high level, on on a top-notch level. So you have to do your part. I can prepare you, but if you don't do your homework, if you don't prepare yourself, it's very hard for me to recommend a student that is not prepared. And that homework looks like like what going to the company's website, right? Seeing who they are, the where above, they are, yes. what they do, yes. learning the names of you know, at least know who the CEO yeah, of the company exactly. is, right? Um, yeah, and, and I tell the students, look, it's a long list of things you have to check it out. For mm-hmm. example, number one, I tell them always, like, look at these companies culture, what, okay. how they operate, if the company is very hierarchical, if the company is more, inf- is more informal. And how do they get that, though? Well, is that the, lots of, the like, research, exactly. the checking the internet, pulling articles, articles from different home, credible home, resources? Exactly. Wall yes. Street Journal, yes. you know, other sources that sure. allow Newsweek, Businessweek, okay. a lot of the, the, the talk about the company, yes. the, deal, the dealings they, they do, that's, it takes some time. Good. To make sure that you align yourself with that kind of business. Secondly, try to find uh, know more about the leadership of that company. What, yes. what, what are their stories? Maybe they're not going to be your boss most likely because you're going to get still the entry level or some low you know management level. Mm-hmm. So, but it's good to know what they think about who yes. are they. So, thirdly, is about what kind of job is going to be what you're applying for. Is that job aligned to your objectives, personal objectives, career objectives? If you don't like to travel, I love to travel, so I always like I always had jobs that travel a lot. In mm-hmm. fact, it went to overboard and travel, but <laughs> but some people don't want to travel. So I like to live in different countries, I live in five countries. So some people don't want to do that. Mm-hmm. So some people want to stay in the same place. Some people want to be managers. Some people yeah. want to be subject matter experts, right? The consultants, educators, yes. nonprofit. Yes. Look what's your passion. Now I tell people, people say, but Professor Lima, passion is not something that's going to pay my bills. <sighs> that is true, but the other way around is gonna be is not gonna work. If you do something that you absolutely hate just yes. because it pays your bills, yes. two things will happen yes. separately or together. Your life will be miserable. You, yes. you still pay your bills, but your life's gonna be miserable, or eventually you have to quit and then you cannot pay your bills. Yeah. So I think you're better off to you have to pay your bills for sure. Get something that you enjoy. And keep looking for what's your real element of contentment. I agree. You know? I agree. I, you know, I'll tell it just a short, a sh- really quick. And so I remember teaching at the uh, at mm-hmm. the master's level, and you know, we do the, our little icebreakers, and you mm-hmm. know, we try to build individual relationships with our students. And I always would tell my students mm-hmm. a story, semi true, right? It, it's based out of truth, right? But I tell them about how I worked for a company and so it was 757. Mm-hmm. I would get out of my car, right? Park in the parking lot. I'd get out of my car. I'd walk up to the front door because it was an eight to five, mm-hmm. right? So I'd walk up to the front door. By the time I get to the front door, it's about 758. I'd open the door, walk into the door, go to the elevator, right? I'm standing at the elevator. 
and the door open. It's about 7.58. By the time I get on the elevator, it's 7.59. Mm -hmm. The elevator leaves the first floor, the ground floor, and goes up to the fourth floor. And so when I step off the elevator, it's 8 o'clock. Mm -hmm. I look at my watch and I say, damn, it's not 5 o'clock yet, <laughs> right? And so, of course, everyone laughs. They're like, well, Professor, you, it, you just got to work. You're ready to go already. And I use that and I say to them, the day that you wake up mm -hmm. and you no longer like what you do, it's time for change. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Between 7.57 yes. and 8 o'clock, I've just arrived, I've gotten off the elevator, and I'm looking at my <laughs> clock already, saying damn, it's not 5 o'clock yet. But I use that quite like what you're saying, to share with, within, exactly. with certainly our students, and to let them know, listen, the day that you wake up and you don't like what you right. do, it's time for change. And so it's about positioning yes, one's self for change. Absolutely. I share with them about, you know, how many times, even still today, I like I have to pinch myself because I'm able to wake up every day and do what I want to do, do mm -hmm. live my passion. And oh, by the way, make money while doing it. Mm -hmm. So I like to say those kinds of right. things because just in the way that you're telling them, you know, make sure that you do your homework, make right. sure that you, you know, encouragement, right? Just a variety of ways to to better look and have perspective and understand, mm -hmm. right? What you're doing and where you're going, right? The path that, that exactly. we're choosing. Exactly. Um, wow, this has been awesome, Professor Lima. I am glad that you came and sat down with us. Um, Great information. I like how you share what our students should look for. I like that you talked about Job 360. Mm -hmm. You talk about going into the classroom. Mm -hmm. You talk about um, a lot of the companies that you've got relationships mm -hmm. with and more to come. Right. So this is great information. We've got viewers and listeners that will tune in to our um, podcast here today. And so this is going to certainly prove to be value valuable information and so, I want to make sure that you stop by again to mm -hmm. keep us Absolutely. updated. Absolutely, anytime. So Professor, I, I have a couple of questions that I that yes. would like to, to ask you is uh, first because I, I also was a student here. For some of the newest newer students that come into the university, at what point they, they should consider start visiting you or reaching out to your ah, department? Good question. Uh, if, either if it's a bachelor's, uh, associates, or even master's degree, at what point they look for you? And my second question is more outside of the of the building, but I'm not from, from Miami, I'm not from here, mm -hmm. but what are some of the best practices that when, while we are living in this city, uh, we can do to to land some networking places or where to do best practices for networking and, mm. and reaching out to headhunters mm. or you know yeah. recruiters yeah. Yeah. like that what's the best place to yeah go? so let me let Good me give question. you yeah let me give you the answer to the first question about when should you start you should start in the first day of class when you start doesn't matter if he's associate bachelor's masters doesn't matter the process is the same so mm -hmm. I tell the students and I, I like that engagement with them I want them to come to see me I don't mind I love the one-on-one -on -one engagement with the students as I said the work is bulk and is individual mm -hmm. volume and individual I will visit now next week when the class starts I will visit all the classes including the online classes mm -hmm. and I'll say hi I'm Alex come to see me if you're not in, the, in Miami do a zoom we can do a zoom there's lots of ways yes. that we can communicate right now I also have relationships. So to answer your question before I to make sure I answer that, the students should start as soon as possible. Now, for example, interview management is something that you get with practice. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have practice, if you don't interview, if you don't present in class, yes. if you don't speak in public, then you don't train. You have to train yourself to do that, right? And the more you do, the more you get interviewed, the more you interview people, the mm -hmm. more you present, the better. Now, regarding network management, building your personal network or professional network. I always tell the people, I have one uh, person that used to work for me. Every time he calls me, he asks me for something. Every time. And there's a little bit of a story to tell you. But, and the other day when he called me, he said, he doesn't call me Professor Lima, Alex, uh, Mr. Lali, you know such and such person because he's trying to do some business with that person. Mm -hmm. And I replied to him, what is in that for me? Because every time you call me, you want something for you. And this time I was upset to say, what is in that for me? Because I tell people, a network is a bilateral yes, engagement. Yes, I give and I get. Yes, I give and yes. I get. If you just 
give, there's something wrong. Yes. So you need to balance that. So we have relationship with recruiters. I have, for example, a relationship with Robert Half, which is the eighth recruiter company in the United States. The VP of South Florida, Will Walker, we engage regularly mm-hmm. on conversations. So they are placed all over the United States, Robert Half, all kinds of yes, levels. You can yes. find jobs in California, etc. I have recruiting companies in Puerto Rico. I have recruiting co- another ones here in Miami. So some of these companies that we work with, they are present everywhere in the United yeah. States. Marriott is one of the companies, for example, they're everywhere. So we have positions that to people that are in different locations, right? Depends, I think the, the, the secret sauce is about their preparation, their mm-hmm. ability to position. And that is their part, the students' part, and my part as well, connect and make sure that they use those resources, right? And so from a net po- network, and I'd like to kind of follow up with uh, some of what Anibal has, has asked about. And so from a networking mm-hmm. standpoint, we use, right, Professor Lim, our career services, mm-hmm. right, to help with identifying opportunities. Outside of that, do you recommend a Toastmasters? Do you recommend, um, you know, speed networking? Do you recommend a ca- Chamber of Commerce? Do you recommend other kinds of, uh, of institutions or organize, local organizations mm-hmm. that students should maybe become membership? Yeah. A I member usually, of? Depending okay. on the career that the person is, if it's business or technology or healthcare. I talk to them about options of, for example, like I said, the Chamber of Commerce yes. or some professional organization, technology, the IIE or other ones which are more, uh, which are more aligned with their area of expertise. Okay. Um, I tell them, in LinkedIn, LinkedIn allows you to participate in 50 groups, groups that you wow. even can create your own group. Wow. I have a group, two groups that I created in LinkedIn that I'm the owner of those groups. So you can have groups in LinkedIn and participate in ah. groups aligned with your area. Usually these groups are formed by people in a particular area, for example, artificial intelligence or marketing, digital marketing, mm-hmm. or human resources management. So use that thing. Most ah. of the LinkedIn users, including professionals, most of the LinkedIn uh, users, they do not explore LinkedIn as they should. Right, I yeah. see sometimes senior execs in LinkedIn and they barely use it. Now, yeah. it's their option, but I said, you should, if you pay, if you have the premium uh, membership, even if it's free, use as much as you can yeah. because people check out, they look at LinkedIn yeah. all the time yeah. before they hire you, right? So uh, yes, I recommend them to professional associations okay. aligned to their career plan. In their course career services development, the CSD 500 and 300, there is a module. And by the way, for the students that are listening, every module that they do, they get a certificate, which okay. is free. You know, that should, and those people come in, they mm-hmm. so far have been liking. So there's a module, which is about career planning. And I said, an, an online and a networking process. Mm-hmm. So we tell them and give them best practices to help them on that, on that, um, on that direction. One awesome. thing I want to tell you before I forget, because it's very important. In that course, CSD 500 and 300, we also have every module has a soft skill uh-huh, associated. Good. We have one that's leadership, the other one is communication, mm-hmm. interpersonal relationship. Which a little task, there's no pass or there's no grade, which I also check all the universities. There's no point to make a student on the career service act, oh, I got an A, you got a B. Mm-hmm. It's like you do the work, it's more like to introspective sure. work than sure. they to think about the sure. process. And then they, um, and they um, do the tests. Once they finish, they can get the certificate. But awesome. all those things are there. Mm-hmm. It's just for them to, uh, that's what I'm going to be talking. As you can see, there's a lot of things to talk about. Yes. So when I go to a class, the students may be overwhelmed because that's why I tell them you have to come, you have to participate on Job 360 yes. so I can really explain to you yes. what we have, right? Awesome. Well, on that note, Professor Lima, again, thank you so very much. We are going to have you back to keep <laughs> us updated and to share with our students. Absolutely. And I want to thank you, our listeners, our loyal and faithful listeners and viewers. Um, we will tune in on next week and we have more fun and enter- entertaining um, as well as good and helpful um, information for you. Um, As always, thank you. We look forward to seeing you again.